Hey everybody! We are going to be exploring somebody new today, at least new to me. I had a request on my last video, so that video was with Lord Hanuman, that was also a request. And Lord Hanuman was guiding us to understand how to master being human, so the whole message is all about that. If you're interested in learning about Lord Hanuman and mastering being human, you can watch that video. I'll put a link in the description. So, thank you all for watching that video, and I, I have a request here to look into Guru Rinpoche. I, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but that's what I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him Guru Rinpoche. I didn't do any Google search, so I don't really have a lot of background other than what you shared in your comment. Okay, so this is the comment. I'm going to read it straight up. You say, thank you, Abby. I love this perspective with Lord Hanuman. If you have time. Can you look into the life of Guru Rinpoche? Where is he now? What dimension or realm is he existing? As it said, he left to help protect Earth from aliens, malevolent aliens. It would be amazing to see through your eyes on this. <laughs> okay. Guru Rinpoche. Give me just a moment here. And please, if you guys have a request, if you have a question, just put it in the comment section. And I want to build my channel on what you guys are interested in hearing about, what you're curious about, and growing together in this way. <laughs> and by the way, I read those comments on Lord Hanuman, the, the monkey image. It was a little creepy. I didn't know he was a monkey guy. I didn't know that. <laughs> but that was, a, that was a fun surprise for me. And I, yeah, so. <laughs> anyway, okay. I don't know what Rinpoche looks like, but we're going to find out more about him and where he's at. And maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised there, too. I'll, I'll look up an image and see what he looks like later. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Alright, specifically, so my guides are saying, okay, what are the specific goals here? We're going to get to know Guru Rinpoche, yes. But specifically, where does he exist? That, that was one of the questions. Um, where is he now and what dimension or realm is he existing? And also this exploration of malevolent aliens, um, what is his relationship with protecting Earth from potentially malevolent aliens, um, and what can we learn about that? Um, all very interesting. So where is he, what dimension or realm, and um, what can we learn about how he is protecting Earth? What is his relationship with these malevolent aliens? Okay. <sighs> Where is he? Uh, all right. Okay, when I say where is he, there's this crazy vibration. Just me saying where is he. It's just like, whoa, whoa, what? I mean, I couldn't even re replicate it. It's just like, it's almost squishing my body in and out, almost like I'm a, um, what is that instrument that goes like this? <laughs> in and out and in and out, the squeeze box. Isn't that a song too? <laughs> Mama's got a squeeze box. Daddy can't sleep at night. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's like in and out and I feel squished, okay? I feel like this is um, overwhelming, taking my breath away. Where is he now? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh my gosh, that's what it feels like. Why is it like that? Oh man, when I say why is it like that, it actually picks up my voice and amplifies the sound into some level that is ridiculous. I mean, it's it's almost shattering. Like, uh, take a vibration and then see how you can amplify and destroy a whole planet with it. I've never come into an energy space where when I talk out loud in the energy space, it actually picks up my actual vibrational language here and turns it into a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> That's my first experience, okay? Guru Rinpoche, where is he now? Um, this is what's happening when I go to him. I don't know what any of this means yet. I snap my fingers and I'm not going to allow it to take my voice and do that anymore. Because it's going to be hard for me to um, take steps in here when it's doing that. One thing that comes to me about this Guru Rinpoche, where I'm being guided, and remember we're totality, so there's going to be aspects of himself that are going to be the most important aspects that I need to go to. So where is his totality? It's everywhere in many forms of itself. Um, so where's the form that's helping to protect the planet from the aliens? I, I mean, it could be guided there if that um, is one of the places that I need to take a look, if that's happening. Um, and I'm guided into this space. And I, I know I need to help him with something. I'm not sure what it is yet. I 
I tell him, I, I slow everything down. I've already stopped the vibration. I'm actually talking in this space as I'm talking to all you guys. I'm like an announcer and you can hear everything that I'm saying, okay? And when I slow the vibration down, I'm moving the space with like a cosmic hand. I'm just sort of like a big giant eye around here and I'm just moving the space around because he's hiding in here. I don't know why he's hiding. He shouldn't have to hide. Uh, why would he hide? So again, I snap my fingers and I say, you are in front of me. He doesn't want to be seen. He really wants to be as thin as air and forgotten or um, just hidden. So this would be an aspect of himself that is fearful. If you're a guru, you would deeply understand what fear is and especially in the energy world, there's no reason to carry fear with you in the energy world. It's, it's, human beings, we're kind of biologically fearful, but the soul is not fearful. So what aspect am I reaching here that carries a, a certain weight of fear? And is this um, Guru Rinpoche or some different version of himself, some other lifetime? I mean, it is in an energy space. It's not like in an incarnate space. The, the longer I stare at you are standing right in front of me um, because I'm pulling his energy through the fabric of everything that he's trying to hide inside of energy and energy and energy and energy. Like you can do that, but I mean, we know where each other is because we're part of everybody. Like I'm a part of him too. So I can't hide from myself. Like nobody can hide in the energy world. Um, you might be forgotten about, but you won't ever be forgotten about forever. It's just there's timelines for things. So I'm pulling him together. And I, I'm building him into presence, okay? I'm building him into presence here. I don't like how you became sand. I don't like how you spread out forever and ever and ever. I don't like how you aren't coming together um, purposefully. Um, you, you, you're, you're wanting to be separated. You're wanting to be at a distance. You want to be scattered. Um, you're wanting to be hidden. And that tells me there's something unresolved here that is hard for you to just feel collected and empowered by your collected self. <sighs> it's really weird. I mean, the next scene is where his eyes are kind of like got a white covering on them. They just look like the cataracts or something, but it's like a white glaze on both of his eyes. And he's sort of being molded and shaped as some kind of form of himself. And part, part of what I'm convinced here is that when, when you reference um, that you, you relate to him facing something of malevolent aliens to protect the earth, that means that there's a thread um, associated with his consciousness in order for the idea to even be planted. And so is the idea true? Is it not true? Um, there's, I'm going to come into a relationship with that. I'm going to witness some kind of relationship with that. But what this is telling me, and I believe what Guru Rinpoche is telling all of us, is that um, we have to be careful about what we believe, um, malevolent aliens. I think it's important to be realistic, um, because there is, um, even if, if there are malevolent aliens, we can say realistically there are malevolent aliens, okay? But if we, we believe it as an idea, um, well, um, the truth is, um, in the depths of my heart and soul, I really feel strongly that, that that is part of my reality. So there's different variations of, you know, 1 plus 1 equals 2 is, in all reality, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Um, here's an alternative idea of what math can become is working with a different um, concept, a relationship with concrete numbers and turning, transforming it into something we never thought of, working with the infinite concepts of, of arithmetic, which a, a real mathematician would understand that better than I can. And it always came to me as one plus one equals three, which is the strangest thing is starting to appear in society now. And I, I didn't relate, uh, relate to it as being kind of an emotional level thing, but as a mathematical level thing, an intelligence level thing. But... Um, there's something happening here about our ideas and our belief systems and um, what is um, true and what is um, the fabrication or the idea of truth and how powerful um, is in all reality truth um, or the fabrication or idea of truth can become in all reality truth. So um, I feel like um, he's teaching me through what I'm walking into, what I'm coming across, which could also be an aspect of himself somewhere simultaneously. I'm just going to call it like, I mean, this is literally what's coming to me. He's stuck on a post, a post that runs through his whole body. It becomes his very spine and it's covered in splinters from the inside. Okay. And he's stuck in a really painful situation. 
He's stuck in a painful situation where even his eyes are glazed over and he's not out allowed to see clearly. He's trying to scatter himself in a way that makes it very hard to find him in order to protect himself, but really um, he needs to face this uh, painful thing, this painful um, situation. Is it in all reality this is where his soul is or is this a concept of something his soul is working through? And do we create concepts for each other's souls without meaning to? I know we gather information from each other and so we're curious about it. I get curious about this stuff too. The next thing that I know I need to do with this scene is I need to take that wooden thing out of his back. I need to give him the presence of himself and show him the strength of who he is. He refuses to acknowledge that strength. I, I give him a mirror of his strongest caliber, okay? What does that look like? I don't know. I just know that my intention is pure in my heart and it's just a feeling that I get. And the feeling is sound and sound that is pure is very powerful. So I'm giving him the sound of the purest, strongest representation of himself and the ability to access and see it and work with that energy. But he's kind of renouncing it right now. But what is a separation between his strongest self and his, you could say, weakest self or a version of his weakest self? And let's uh, replace uh, Guru um, Rinpoche with um, everyday human. <laughs> but my guides say, no, we're going to focus on Guru Rinpoche. And if you want to um, put yourself in his shoes, you're more than welcome. <laughs> but they kind of like, do you want to put yourself in those shoes? <laughs> do you ever feel like you're in those shoes on some level? <laughs> you know, so it's just like an interesting kind of ripple of, of thought here. When I take the wood out, it doesn't go away, it remains. But the longer that the presence of his true self is in front of him, the more he acclimates to the love that he has for himself in a genuine way. Maybe somewhere along the line, he... And perhaps um, wise people, sometimes they can struggle with self-love, you know? And sometimes um, humble people, wise people, um, they have their suffering too. So Guru Rinpoche may have his suffering too. I think of masters as never having their suffering, but look at the story of Jesus. Like we all have our suffering. Even masters do. Again, he is still acclimating to the sound of his true self, his strongest self. And his strongest self is guiding him home into his own heart. And through the inspiration to do this journey and just through me exploring it, it it's, that's what I'm supposed to do to help that part of himself. I'm supposed to help that part of himself that's sort of renouncing himself. It's what is fear? You know, sometimes fear is inability to um, face your own higher self <laughs> without realizing it. It's like your true total potential is quite a threatening thing to face, believe it or not. We don't believe that, but when you become energy sensitive and you're in the presence of um, pure benevolence, it's odd how all the light gets in the cracks and crevices and the shame and the, the memories and just despair and all these other human things come out. It's really healing all of that stuff, not force feeding it to you, it's healing it, but it's a vulnerable state of being. And so he's having to face the beauty of who he is in the midst of, I guess, what he decided was his ugliness. And it's helping something to move within himself. And suddenly all the sand falls to the ground and a little speck of his own light returns to the heart of himself. And instantaneously lets go of that dimension. And as soon as that happens, I see an extraordinary starlight and it just blasts in every direction. And it's loud. It's freaking ridiculously loud. It's a very loud sounding instrument. And it's very specific. I mean, a very specific white circle, okay, and very specific lines. Just like a kid maybe draws a picture of a sun, like very specific lines. And something about this object, I, I don't know that, that this represents a sun or a star or a drawing of a sun or a star. It's like an object. It's actually it represents an object that creates unfathomable quantities of light and sound, okay, simultaneously. And that is coming from his strength. That is coming from the strongest aspects of who he is, come together in a collective of strength. It's important that I let you know that he was renouncing himself in that 
space that I initially went to. So even a guru goes through lifetimes where it is having a hard time facing the light of itself. And that could be depression or, um, I mean, it, it could be anything that pulls um, a light through that lifetime, pulls you away from your true light and your true um, influence and all that stuff, you know? And so that's why we can help collect each other's souls and bring that power back into us. It's just like a soul retrieval thing. There's a reason why we're showcasing a guru here that also has a vulnerable spec. And then bringing that vulnerable spec is quite powerful and it's a full-fledged soul, full-fledged memory, returning to the nucleus of itself, coming from a place of um, light and sound, which is quite um, intense. It's like that, it's just uh, a squeeze box, like, um, whoa, uh, very loud like that. Okay, this is very, this is surreal. This is like the next part of this journey. So where does Lord Guru exist? Well, an aspect of him existed in that space. What is that space? What dimension, which realm? It's just a, a space of existence. There's a, just a bajillion spaces of existence, unfathomable quantities of spaces of existence that aren't necessarily associated with it. Um, that's in the 19th dimension or something. It do, it's not like that. It's just a space of conscious existence, okay? And bringing that part is, is bringing um, a collective power and wholeness to his totality. So now where does he exist? So the next version that I'm running into is a strong collective of, of himself. And what is really unique to his energy is, is light and sound that is overwhelming, to be honest. <laughs> it's very, very intense. It's a lot. It's impressively a lot. <laughs> so... That's very specific. And I'm moving my consciousness towards it, but it's like I'm never reaching. It's like a dream where you're, you're running as fast as you can and you're going nowhere. I am moving as fast as, as consciousness, like as fast as thought. Bam, I'm there. But I'm never able to get there. It's weird. So I stand in my own dimensional space. It's just an energy space. It's a really random shape too. It's kind of like a triangular and square at the same time because it, it, it looks like a house on its side, basically. It's kind of the shape. There's one really long wall and then there's kind of a triangle and then flat and, you know, starts to build the square. And it, I can see through the sides of it. And I'm drawing... Uh, pan plans, uh, patterns as to how I will reach this emanation. And oddly enough, it, it's mathematical equations. And all of this combined turns into a baseball diamond and people actually playing baseball and people sitting down eating cotton candy and hot dogs and drinking beer, pop or whatever. There's people consuming foods, having a good time, watching a baseball game. And there's a parallel between people having a good time watching a baseball game and this strange dimensional space that I'm in writing plans and mathematical equations. Somehow these two parallel. <laughs> I have no idea how, but they do. Now I merge these two together. It's like this birthed, this shape with the math birthed the diamond and the people. Um, but I'm also blending it together which for some reason amplifies the vibration and sound in the light, and it's propelling the shape like a spaceship into the object, that which represents Guru Rinpoche. That there is a, a forever distance between even my conscious thought and my ability to access him. There's a huge distance. But now I created a, a, a vibration that's going to propel me across that, and it's a combination of these two things. And I say, why the heck are you trying so hard to be far away and hard to reach? Why are you doing that on purpose? He, the echo that comes back is that he is building and building and building and building and building and building an, an energy buildup, like an energy, um, an intensity. He's building and building and building and building intensity, okay? He's storing it as well as the ultimate sort of explosive event. He's just storing it. He's just sucking it into his body and it's just building and building and building and building and building in there. 
I don't experience anything about malevolent aliens, anything about aliens at all, actually. I don't even experience anything necessarily directly related to planet Earth. I just experience this, okay? And I've tried to make parallels and connections, but it just disappears. Like, I've placed planet Earth in here, placed some aliens in here. It doesn't go anywhere, which tells me it's not the most important part of the message. It's not um, at the forefront of what I'm called to share here. So... He is not, he always keeps a, I'm so much closer to him now, but he always keeps a gap on purpose. I tell him, you know what, I could claw my way to you, but I just, I need to know if that's really appropriate or not. And the, the next thing is I'm just going to become one with the gap and close the gap. So, because I want to actually get to him. I want to actually meet him, understand him more. Um, and nothing's coming to me as to why this strong aspect of himself is doing this. It's a mystery. He really challenges me to try to uh, clear that gap. <laughs> I say everything is based upon thought anyway. So given enough thought, uh, in, in an instant of time, I, I'm, I've already cleared it. Like, I, I already have cleared it. I just don't understand why you want it to be there. Instantly, I, I'm in the object now. And there's people in the object I wonder if this is um, people live in this object and they're not just soul levels they're, they are representing um, so you can tell the difference between what is just simply a soul and what is more of an incarnate state because an incarnate state represents um, a path trying to achieve a goal questioning oneself you know th those types of concepts not all incarnate states question themselves okay not all incarnate states have emotional spectrum like a human not all incarnate states but there's um i have an opinion um i have an idea this is what's coming to me a soul doesn't behave like that and so the people that live in this object um, actually have um are learning they're in a, a place of learning and experiencing beyond just the soul level, okay? So it feels um, like it has a timeline to it. It has a, a learning process about it. And they wear togas, okay? In my vision of it, they wear brightly colored. One's super red, another one's like an orangey yellow color. There's two in particular that I keep watching, but I feel like there's these togas are like their outfit and they're all males. All of them look like men. And they're not particularly um, like showing off their guns or anything. They're just basic bodies. Like they're just, and they're very human looking. They're super bright colored togas. And some of them have like, uh, the one with the red actually has a kind of Jewish uh, style with a, a little cap on his head. Really nice guy. He emanates being a really vibrationally, really um, kind hearted um, what, what I love most about him, he does represent being wise, but what, what gives him that, that strength of wisdom is that he's so patient. I, I love his patience, and the fact that he is just so patient, he has the most generous, um, sort of kind eyes and smile. It's just the most, almost generous um, presence to him. That I, I feel like, um, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm really honored by it. I don't need him to say a word to me because he's already said so much just by being a wonderful person. Okay, somebody with a blue, noticeably blue toga. This guy with the red toga, that's really nice, um, doesn't have any facial hair. He's a little more rounded, like he's got a rounder body, like maybe he likes to eat more or something. <laughs> At this one with the blue toga is uh, has really jet black hair and he has facial hair. And he's a little bit more cut, okay? He's not um, rounded. <laughs> he's got... It's almost like they're, the way that they look kind of dictates their personality. Because this one that's... That he's got actually... I can see muscles and he has very chiseled facial features. Like, he has really intense eyes. And he is kind of on security like he's asking me what am i doing here but the really kind of chubby <laughs> red one red he's so kind like he just always is this way he's just always this all the time i wonder if these are parts of guru rin um rinpoche 
like if Rinpoche could be um, a community of people, this might be what it would look like in this incredible um, object, which perhaps the object, the vibration and the light is on purpose, but he's building something inside of himself that has a great purpose that is a bit of a mystery. Because I, I feel like this man in the red toga reminds me of, of what I would be in the presence of somebody who I would admire, you know? We admire gurus. We, we do. Some people can be called a guru that not really... You know, there's more ego involved in that guru than there is real wealth of heart, you know? So it, that can happen. But um, I want to admire a guru, you know? I want to admire the soul of a guru. But I do admire this, this one with the red. This one with the blue is pretty um, careful. He's very uh, wat watchful eye. He's uh, keeping an eye on things. I touch his heart instantaneously and I still the vibrations in there of what he's constantly in, on lookout. Oh, and as soon as I still those vibrations, he just passes out. And there's another being that comes in here. This is a huge person inside of this object. I don't know, everybody's normal human height, you know, in a range there, but this huge person is like 20 feet tall. Has many layers of clothing, really heavy clothes as well. I say, where's Guru Rinpoche in the midst of all of this? Is this object him? Are all of you him? What does this have to do with Earth and malevolent aliens? Is that something we can explore? Is that... Nothing, nothing is being said right now, so I'm just examining everything. It's all becoming quite still. And part of what I'm doing is I'm changing things. I'm taking all the lines from the object and merging them all together and I'm placing them inside the object. So the object's just a circle. And these lines are magnetically attracted to different locations inside the circle. And when they start to come together from the inside, um, they create a huge um, beam of light from the inside of the circle. They're almost like french fries that are all sort of facing. And then once they touch each other, it creates, again, another layer of sound and um, light. Okay, It's like a very pure beam of light. Something is still undecided and unresolved. Something isn't full circle yet. And to me, I feel, I'd rather get to the heart of what everything is all about and just let all this stuff go. I mean, I can hang out here all day long, but it's only sort of giving me access to the same information. Um, it's, I'd rather go visit with his higher self. There's still conflict that he's working through and there's something he's building in the background of himself. But there's still something undecided here about him in his path and what he's learning in his own self-expression. What I will say is interesting about him is specifically seems to be similar working with light and sound waves. And sound waves that could blow up a whole planet. Like really intense and that's that's uncommon that I would to go into energy space and it automatically picks up my psychic voice. <laughs> like, that's really unusual that it would do that. It's not as if I haven't um, gone into energy spaces where sound was being used as a protective shield. Sound is being used for all different ways. Like sound's a very powerful um, tool for healing or destruction. It's just like snake venom, you know, it could kill you or it could heal you. So some tools could go one way or another way. And so he seems to represent something having to do with tools of sound. Okay, I'm going to go to his higher self for a moment and I'm going to ask him just straight up. I'm just, just moving on from all this randomness and I'm going to his higher self and I'm asking. Is there a message for all of us here from Guru Rinpoche, um, the familiar name and person we know, set of the infinite soul and all of its places and forms and known and unknown representations?
he has a really sweet song in his heart. This, this is, um, I don't see that he has a relationship with some kind of uh, responsibility like some galactic fighter or something. I see that he um, brings the flowers into bloom on our planet and the, the, the hearts that bloom into love and light on our planet. He is adept with working with vibration with sound waves to bring out the sounds of harmony. He's not focused on evil, like he, he's a, I just keep thinking of, let's, let's just call it like a galactic warrior or something. I don't feel his spirit is a representation of that um, as, it, as it is connected to planet Earth in some other dimension. I actually feel there is a sweetness to the sound of him, but I also feel he has been challenged at times with having to face his own growth and development. And so it shows me um, the path of a, of a soul that you can call it a, a guru or a master, but struggles just like we all do and needs some help just like we all do in order to become something of the unknown that um, has its reasons, its rhymes and its reasons that might not always be understood by us. But when I talk to his higher self and ask him about planet Earth and showcase the idea of another dimension and this sort of evil, sort of alien war, whatever, the good and the bad, um, somewhere in some hidden dimension around our planet, um, I, nothing echoes back to me about this. The echoes back is he's working with amplifying the sounds of harmony within our heart. Because when those sounds are loudest, um, they override the sounds of what cripples us. And what causes us to feel separation. I feel like if you could um, define him as anything, he's a master of sound. Like he would be wonderful to work with in order to amplify the sound of, of something very loving and beautiful. But it's quite possible he would know the other side of the spectrum as well. And to be truly a guru, you'd have to be a representation of the yin-yang and you'd have to be okay with every aspect of who you are from the darkest to the lightest sides. And you don't neglect your dark sides. Um, you, you come to peace with it, you know? I feel like that's the message I'm called to share. And maybe there's others that feel called to see another side of him, but this is what I, I'm shown about him and anyone who would want to reach out to his spirit for support I feel that his higher self is quite lovely, um, really, really could help bring out the sound of, of harmony from within you. He's showing me one more thing, okay? I know this is, this is a lot longer than I expected. He shows me something. It has to do with, um, he wants us all to think of a time where we, it was almost, it was like there's an event in our life that just rippled through us. And how, what was that like? Not based upon what it looked like or what someone said, or what happened exactly, but how it rippled through you. It separated maybe your, your heart from your hopes and dreams, or your, um, it rippled through you and it made your eyes pop out of your head or put you in shock or something. Um, it rippled through you, an event rippled through you, okay? And it's like, be aware that every exchange ripples, every exchange ripples. That your words ripple, that your dreams and ideas ripple, that um, your idea of right and wrong ripples, that justice versus injustice ripples, um, that compassion ripples, um, patience ripples, right? And who we are is a rippling, who we are is a rippling. And what, if you call yourself an event, okay, so you are a rippling event of light and sound. You are light and sound. You are a rippling event. And so something ripples towards you and through you, but you also ripple towards others and through others. He really wants to um, emphasize that we, we think about this and that we, we choose to feel about this, like sense about this. Sense it. It's not just a thought in your head, it's words. It's, it's, it's like... Music without sound, just stand next to a speaker and let it vibrate through your body. But these exchanges with each other are ripplings too. And you yourself are an event that ripples. He, this is another important thing he wants to tell all of us. This is so important. Okay. <sighs> Shows me a human being who's living a life that is unfulfilling. And they're trying to figure out what their purpose is or why their life is like this or something is not fulfilling okay so in a way they're, they're rippling i'm not fulfilled 
that I'm not fulfilled. And it, it, and it circulates inside. And he shows me this person. It's just this like radiating sound wave. It's just radiating sound wave, radiating sound wave. And sending out I'm not fulfilled in order for someone would radiate back an answer. It, that someone could radiate back the answer. And um, he wants me to listen to this one for a little bit. I'm unfulfilled. I'm unfulfilled. And what is radiating back? There's actually much radiating back, but something about the sound of I'm unfulfilled is blocking the radiating sounds of what creates fulfillment. And so I am unfulfilled blocks the sound of fulfillment that's radiating into this one solutions. And so, so I'm unfulfilled is, is a complete and whole feeling at times, a crippling feeling at times, a despairing feeling at times. Is this sometimes he says, please, sometimes just, just, just put that on mute just for a day and, and let yourself receive some ripples back because it, there'll be answers that come to you in your world, but in other worlds too, because there's going to be sometimes some random, it's almost like he's making a tease at me, like some random weirdo, because he's saying something about this is some random person in some random shape. <laughs> for some reason, they're writing these like mathematical equations and then it's manifesting this this, I don't know, baseball event, <laughs> and they're starting to parallel and vibrate at each other's languages, and now they're starting to become one, and it creates the, the inspiration to move forward. <laughs> He's like, we don't know all the things, right? About one dimension interacts with another dimension that seem to have nothing in common, only to propel one dimension forward while the other one just had nothing to do with whatever that was. I don't even know that even happened. And we're ricocheting off each other in every single dimension in the whole universe. But there is an answer for you. There is an answer for you. It just turn down the sound <laughs> of the unfulfillment, okay? Just turn down the sound. I'm unfulfilled. And then let the ripples come into you. And he showcases that I was attracted to that, that man with the red toga because it's almost like that wonderful piece that in the generous smile, I, I can't explain it, but his energy was just so ridiculously generous and pure. And it was wonderful. It was Wonderful. Now, if I parallel that to the I am unfulfilled individual, there's going to be no knowing about that toga man, okay? Because I'm unfulfilled is going to be louder and more wah, 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 like breaking down of all the sounds that are the actual answers that are coming back to support the I am fulfilled person. I'm unfulfilled person, okay? What he, this is interesting because he's, he, man, this is a very long journey here, okay? Um, he's saying this. This is why. You change your language. I'm unfulfilled now becomes I'm fulfilled, which then allows the door to unlock. Like it opens the door so that the vibration that creates I am fulfilled is now received. And then shows me the flower that blossoms within the heart of the individual. You have to completely allow yourself to feel. You have to completely allow yourself. It takes me back to the scene where this, this sort of aspect that is really struggling to be in the presence because the presence of his true strength is what he's rejecting, right? So then how would he be able to allow his true strength to come in to nurture and heal him? He's rejecting it, repulsed by it, and then hurting himself in the process. Um, all of this is vibration and sound. All of it is vibration and sound. And so the strong self knows this, but the self rejecting the strength is just overwhelmed by this, needs to say, I am strong, so that the strong self now can blossom within the weak self, and then the weak self can be a, just like a skin that's being shed, okay? And then the strong self is now what comes, um, is birthed forth, okay? But this isn't for like an instant in time. Um, you have to... You have to work on standing your ground when it comes to letting vibrations work through you. Let them work through you. Don't shield yourself from them. Let them work through you, especially when you're working with the language of receiving really positive energy. Um, who is it that you want to be? Who is it that you want to become? Um, that's that's what he's talking about here. Um, the, the languages that we use to break ourselves down and create resistance, but that's the truth. I really am in this bad way versus the language we use that says, you know what? I am courageous enough to say I am healed. Now you actually are shedding the skin that is the I'm not healed so that you can be the representation of I am healed. So you have to let the ripples in that are going to help you get to the place that you want to go, okay? Because there's no gap or ravine because he's showing me when I'm trying to get to the object, right? There's just always this gap, but I, I, I couldn't give up in where I wanted to be and where I wanted to go even i was just like you know what this is confusing why is it this why is it that like why can't we do something with um i don't know practical human world stuff like i'm interested in practical human world stuff well this is outer world energy world stuff you know 
we have to translate these riddles and explore the wisdom that is that is unlocked when we go through these images. So there's this gap, but I, I stated that, you know what, I, I still want to get there because I want to know who you are and I want to meet you. And, and so that was me saying, I know what I want and I'm going to get what I want. Like I'm allowing the vibrations to come into me to help me get to where I want to be. And as soon as that happens, um, I can now uh, sort of rejoice in that place of where I want to be. But there is a time sort of involved between the, the reconciliation and the realization and the shifting and the changing of how you are expressing yourself and letting information in and out, okay? Because he shows me that there's some kind of recovery time or healing time of acclimating to um, what you're becoming. And that's normal. So it might feel like it's taking a long time because you're acclimating. So always stay in a place of I am patient or I, I because then you are patient. Um, I am compassionate. You are compassionate. Um, I'm strong enough to say the truth. You are strong enough to say the truth. Um, but sometimes you're like, I can't say that. I can't say that. Like, get those energies away from me. They're hurting me. I, I'm weak now. I can't do it. Right? Then we're rippling, right? We're rippling. So we're renouncing that which we are, which is strong, right? And so everything that we've seen and all this whole journey that we've been on, it's like traveling through the universe of the understanding of the guru Rinpoche um, in order to bring all this information back to ourselves to just sort of um, rebirth us you know what i mean it's just rebirth our the way that we see the way that we travel um in our our energies and our human world our um relationship to what's beyond ourselves um it's like we're traveling we're vibration we're expressions um we're events of vibration like it's yeah it's all of this hmm. yeah that's what i'm meant to share that was that was cool i mean <clears throat> There's many parts to this journey, you know? There's the, the weak and vulnerable moment of having to face the strength. Um, returning apart back to oneself that even Guru Rinpoche has a timeline of strengths and weaknesses, just like we all do. You know, I was recently mentioning how a true master is still a student. And if the master cannot consider themselves also a student, that there's, there's something amiss there. Because we, we will always be in a, val a state of value and appreciation of each other. And that's the depth of truth. And the master would not renounce the student within. And to be truly a master, you must also be um, a student. This is this, this the way it goes. And so Guru Rinpoche shows that um, the master is also the student. Like the guru is, has also weak strengths and weaknesses. And we can help the guru just as much as the guru can help us. Um, because that's the true where true balance comes from. That's where true balance comes from. All right. That's what I meant to share. All that stuff. <sighs> Thank you so much for the comment, the recommendation. I really appreciated that. If any of you want me to take a look, um, do a journey into anybody, channel someone, <laughs> um, share energy healing on a specific topic, uh, put it in the comments. I'll make a video on it. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. I hope you're all having a great day. Um, if you ever need my support just individually in a session, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.